All right, we're back. We're on page 127. We are talking about 2D vectors still. We know a lot of stuff about them. Um, and we just met the standard unit basis vectors. So i is the vector 1, 0. j is the vector 0, 1. You can write every vector in two dimensions as a linear combination, meaning some number times i plus some number times j, as a linear combination of those two vectors. And that's interesting. That's why they're called the standard basis vectors. Every other vector is based on them. Um, they're the standard basis vectors. They're not the only basis vectors. We could use pretty much anything that's not parallel and work it out. But do we want to? I don't know. We're going to kind of explore that uh, in this video probably. So let's see, uh, see what we're doing here. You can use i and j when you want. I don't know. I almost never use it. Uh, but it exists and you got to know about it. So let's see if we can deal with this problem. We want to simplify this and then minus. I never, like, I've not... In my brain, I haven't like worked out exactly how to deal with the like minus thing when I'm drawing it. I know what I'm gonna do. So like five four, five four is like there. So first, with this, and then uh, so I want to do minus. So what I'd rather do is plus. So five i plus four j which is really just the ordered pair of five, four. And then I would rather do plus three I minus two J. Okay, so three I minus two J. Three I is uh, three to the right and then two down, something like that. So we'll go here. And so I'm gonna put this here. And then our resultant vector, the vector that we get as a result of doing this, should go from initial initial to terminal terminal. I'm having trouble doing that. It like snaps in place. Um, so this, let's just say that, let's say that these vectors have names. Let's say, let's call this vector A, and let's call this vector, uh, I don't know what color I highlighted with, not that one. Uh, let's call this B, All right? So this is B. And this is A. Uh, and then, I mean, I don't know if I found A plus B because I like switched to, I don't know. But anyway, A2 is what we should have gotten. Oh, why am I at 9, 2? What happened here? 1, 2, 3. Oh, I went too far. Crud. Okay. So you're gone, you're gone, you're gone. Dang. Uh, so 3 and 2 here. Okay, and then uh, from here to here. That's why having multiple approaches is a good idea. So this is the vector 8, 2. Um, so that's what we get. Uh, and what are we supposed to do here? Sketch the two vectors in the resultant, find the direction angle of each vector, end of the resultant vector. I, I don't know. I'm not going to learn anything by doing that. Well, maybe you will. I guess it depends on, depends on what you know. So uh, 5i plus 4j is, well, not equals. Let's say it's going to give us theta. So the exact angle is this. Okay. Uh, and then I guess I should use negative 3i plus 2j. This is like a poorly phrased question. People always worry. I've, People learning math spend so much time worrying about stuff that like the person who wrote the question is just like, eh, whatever. Like it's a poorly phrased question. So like, I'm not worried about it. Like you just kind of, you do what you, you're pretty sure it's asking you to do. And then uh, the resultant vector, I guess I should say is eight I plus two J. Nope, not equals, which will give us an angle of inverse tangent of one fourth or two eighths. Who cares if you simplify? All right, so I don't know. I don't know the point of that, but we did it. All right, let's see. So standard basis unit vectors. The, the unit vector part is useful. The fact that they're standard, they're just one, zero, and zero, one is really helpful. You can do this process with any weird thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, instead of using I and J, instead of using one, zero, and zero, one, I'm gonna use negative two, one, and three, two. I don't know why I would do that. It's like, I have decided that I would really like the grid on which I graph everything. So this is really basically what I've done. 
I've decided that I would like the grid on which I graph everything. All right, can I even draw this? So negative two, one, like this. And then three, two, it's gonna be like this. So what I would like is for my grid to be entirely based on that. So what I would do is, let's see, duplicate this, duplicate it, um, and then I'm gonna duplicate this, and then duplicate it, put it here, duplicate it, put it here. See how I'm building this grid? So it's gonna be a grid of parallelograms. And then uh, I would copy this, and I would start filling in. So instead of having nice little squares that are all one by one, I'm getting all these parallelograms that are one vector by the other vector. And so what I'm saying is, I can still do all of my math. I can still find every point in the plane as some scalar multiple of these. So if I take a point, I don't know, like uh, this point, right? Like how do I get there using only these vectors? Well, what I would probably do is I would go like a little bit this way. So I would scale that vector and then I would go a little bit this way and I'd scale that vector, but it's a scalar multiple of them. It's a linear combination of two scalar multiples. So it works. You can do that for every point in the plane as long as the two vectors are not parallel. So let's show these aren't parallel. So negative, uh, so I'm gonna say that uh, three divided by negative two does not equal two divided by one. Therefore, there is no k such that uh, a equals k times b. So they are not parallel. All right, so definitely not parallel. So now, find by hand values of t and v such that negative 3, 5 is a linear combination of a and b. So what we're saying is t times a plus v times b should be equal to negative 3, 5. So what good does that do me? Well, that's two times a is negative two, one, plus v times three, two is negative three, five. Okay, so uh, that tells me, so let's actually do it. On this side, we'll get negative two t plus three v. Then we'll get t plus two v equals negative three, five. So from there, I get two equations. I get negative two t plus three v equals negative three, and also t plus two v. So now we're doing the y components, the delta y's, plus five. All right, what do we do? I'm gonna double this and then add down. So that'll eliminate the t's. I'll get seven v equals 10 minus three, seven. So v is one, and then if v is one, I get t plus two is five, so v is three, t, sorry, t is three. Okay, so that means that uh, if I do three a plus b, it will give me negative three, five. So that's how I end up at the point negative three, five following this grid of parallelograms. So I take vector A, I use it three times. So I start at zero, zero, and I use this three times, which takes me to negative six, three. And then from negative six, three, I use B once, which takes me to negative three, five, which is where I want to go. We can do that for every point in the plane, which is insane. You can do, as long as they're not parallel, you can create this grid of parallelograms and then just move some scalar multiples of those things. So that's kind of crazy. So let's see if we can do this like a little more generally. So find by calculator, thankfully, formulas for T and V. So they're gonna be functions of X and Y, such that the generic vector X, Y is a linear combination of A and B. So we're saying that T times A plus V times B should equal x, y. And then we want to figure out what t is in terms of x and y and what v is in terms of x and y. So to do that, um, I'm going to switch over to the calculator. Let's see. Calculator.
calculator. All right. So I'm just on a new document. Um, all right. So first I'm going to store A and B. So A colon equals, which is control and then templates for you. Uh, negative two, one. B colon equals three, two. Okay. So I've already th figured out, I think, that three A plus B should give me negative three, five. And it does. Now I want to do it more generally. So I'm just going to use solve. Menu three, solve. So menu three, enter. Menu three, one. Uh, T times the vector A plus V times the vector B should be equal to the vector x, y. And then I need to solve for T and for V. And it should give me things in terms of x and y. OK, so now, so this is it. Like, I'm going to copy that down, actually. I'm going to say that T, T has to be equal to, uh, I'm going to say 3y minus 2x. I don't know why it does what it does there over 7. I mean, I think it likes to lead with x whenever it can. V is x plus 2y over 7. All right, so on the calculator, I'm going to redefine these things. So up here, uh, this is probably not the most efficient way to do this. I just paste it down, delete that. I'm going to delete this and do control templates. Oh, I got to do of. So of x comma y, close that. There we go. OK, so now t is a function of x and y. Do the same thing for this. Go up, hold shift while I copy. Um, I want to change this to of x and y colon equals. All right. So when it was uh, negative 3, 5, if I do t of negative 3, 5, it should give me that uh, it should give me 3 because I need to do 3 times a. And then v of negative 3, 5 should give me 1 because I need 1b. And then if I do 3a plus b, it gives me negative 3, 5. So this is working. So now the next thing in the notes says to try to use it for negative 5, 8. So if I do t of negative 5, 8, OK. And if I do v of negative 5, 8, I get that. All right, so if I do 34 sevenths times a, so you start at the origin, and you, you move in the direction of a, and you scale it by 34 sevenths, however you're going to do that. And then once you get there, you move in the direction of b, but you scale it by 11 sevenths, you should end up at negative 5 8, which you do. So I'm going to write down that 34 over 7a plus 11 over 7b equals negative 5 8. And then you can keep going. So, like, so I need to end up at negative 2 5, at 2 negative 5 rather. So I do t of 2 negative 5, and I do v of 2 negative 5. So if I do negative 19 over 7 times a, and then minus 8 over 7 times b, I end up at 2 negative 5. So like compare that to i and j. To end up at 2 negative 5 using i and j, the standard basis vectors, all I need is two i's and negative 5 j's, and I'm there. Here I need negative 19 sevenths and negative 8 sevenths. It's not great. Um, but but it works. You can actually do this for any non, any two non-parallel vectors. You can write every other vector, in, well, non-zero non-parallel vectors. Um, any other vector in the plane can be rewritten as a linear combination of them. Isn't that nuts? I mean, in the notes, we're supposed to do 815. So I'm going to do that also. T of 815, B of 815. So that'll do it. So if I do 29 over 7 times a plus 38 over 7 times b. There you go. That's how you get there. Instead of using i and j, which would have just been 8i plus 15j, uh, we do the insane thing. So it's interesting, though, right? I mean, like, I feel like this, if nothing else, helps you appreciate, like, why i and j? But because you avoid this, and it's all based on the fact that we use a, you know, a square rectangular system. I mean, it's really it's a square system, but a rectangular coordinate system. If everything had been based on weird parallelograms uh, that, that had A and B as their sides, these would be our normal things. And we would look at it and there'd be nothing wrong with that. We'd just be like, yeah, definitely. Those are, those are the normal points. That's how you do it. 
anyway, I'm going to end this here. And so go back to the notes, show you what I wrote. Um, and you can like pause and look or whatever. Let's see if I can get back. Um, so we use our formulas. Our formulas gave us these. I and J are just so much better. Like I is just one zero. J is just zero one. So like to write P, I just need eight I plus 15 J. If my vectors are A and B, I need 29 sevenths of A and 38 sevenths of B, and that's insane. But anyway, I'm gonna stop this here and I'll be back in the next one to do something new. So see you there.